Hello everybody, Average Gamer here. Welcome to another episode of Stellaris, where we're going to restart the whole thing. Um, the reason for that is because a friend of mine, who mods games here and there and tries them out, he said he wanted... Uh, one thing I always wanted to play is like a, as the precursor civilization. The civilization that was the first ones to go out there and colonize and control everything, and then slowly all these little other nations slowly propped up internally to it and it's you know they all slowly whittled away at it and nibbled away at it and nibbled away at it and basically the society just crumbled um that's actually what a friend of mine has set up for me um today actually um so what he's done is he's actually set up a planet he's actually modded the game for me so it's got five thousand stars um we're actually going to set it up so it's a ring and you'll notice there's no no ai empires and there's supposed to be zero uh, advanced AIs as well. Basically, what's going to happen is we're going to start up all by ourselves, um, which also helps because I'm really, really bad at this game. <laughs> like, horribly bad. So basically, what's going to happen is we're going to grow and be massively advanced. Then all these other little uh, little nations are going to prop up here and there, and we're basically just going to leave them be. Um, we're going to ignore their planets. We're going to leave their planets alone. Um kind of be the, the guardians, so to speak. Now, we will bump into some AI still. Um, they'll slowly build up, like, right from the time the game starts. Um, there may be some advanced... Um, there'll still be some nations that are just on the cusp of Space Age, and we actually might come across some other nations still. Um, and they'll grow uh, quite quickly. Um, but, nonetheless, so here we go. So, even though everything's set to zero, I was basically told... I'm going to come up against random. So. Here we go. So we are the Kroll Empire. For the eons since the first primitive Kroll communicates... Communities, sorry. Took shape on the grassy savannas of Warheni. Our civilization has spread and prospered. Despite our rapid progression through the technological ages as a species, we were fragmented and insufficient. And I have a text message. So we're just going to... Oh, hey. I got a uh, job offer. Despite our rapid progression through the technological ages, technological ages uh, as a species, we were fragmented and inefficient. A new system emerged during these chaotic times that delivered us from superstition beliefs and brought order to the society. Some resistance has changed through... Uh, what? Wow, sorry, my vision's a little blurry. I don't know why. Uh, some resisted this change out of irrational fear, but after several pacification wars, they became two protective components of a greater whole. They too became protective components of a greater whole. Fuck. Now, after a successful creation of several experimental subspace fields, the finest minds of the Kroll Empire have finished development of the first warp drives. The stars themselves are finally within our grasp. So, we are the Kroll. We're a despotic hegemony. We use warp travel. Our capital is Warhini. Our ethics are a xenophile. Obviously. There exists in all of us a deep-seated fascination with the unknown. As adventurous spirits and reject the familiar and glorious of the unfamiliar. Wherever or whomever it may be. We're also a militant. <laughs> a militist. So for um, xenophile, we basically like people. Other species a little bit better. For militarist, uh, basically, well, we like military. So our war ha uh, war happiness is plus five. We get a plus ten to our army damage. We also get a plus twenty five percent to our rivalry inference. So for every four rivalries we have, we basically get one extra point, which is pretty good. And then obviously ally influence or alliance influence. Um, we're really not good at f being in, in alliances. We're good kind of being on our own and fighting wars and shit. Um, so that gives us a minus 50. We also are materialist. So we get plus 5% to all our outputs for our sciences, which is pretty good. For our traits, we're rapid readers. So our growth time is minus 10%, which is good. So we actually grow at a rate of 90%. We're quick learners. So we uh, all our um, uh, leaders gain experience 25% faster. And last but not least, our continent preference is uh well it's called it's it's a uh, continental so we get uh, an automatic 80 percent to uh, continental 60 to tropical for uh, 60 to ocean uh, 20 to desert and uh, antarctic i think arid is even below that so 
There we go. So it already tells us that we won technically. Um, but I was told basically to ignore this screen. Because, as I said, we're going to be coming up against random nations and random spots at random times. So we're just going to continue. So we're going to set up our sciences here. Uh, first thing I want to get, because I always find I have an issue with power at the beginning of the game. So I'm going to go with power. I'm going to go with a colony ship because we want to grow as fast as we can. And I want more minerals. Right off the hop. We're going to get our science ship. And we're going to survey our system. With our construction ship, we're going to wait. And with our strike force, I'm actually going to try to grow it right away. I want to get to the, the cap as fast as I can. Uh, so we're going to build, what, it's 56 instead of 60. It costs us two power. That'll, that'll cost us four. So we're going to hold up there to our surface and we're going to take a look see what we can do here so we're going to want to clear this tile and we're going to want to clear this one when we have the money for it I mean, or actually no we want this one because of the power so we're going to unpause we're going to go uh to fast this speed so we want this tile and we're going to want this one perfect we have a new arrow already thank you sir i'm going to move you to that how is our food? Our food is good. Thank you. Uh, we're generating... F f we're producing 11 food, but we only need 7 right now. Um, so I'm going to move this guy here for the moment. I'm going to clear that up. Oh, perfect. And I want you to research that. 22% failure rate. There's a significant scarring on the surface of this world, a pattern that cannot be natural from orbit. The massive rifts look almost like writing. Someone used a mining laser from orbit approximately 5,000 years ago to carve a large body of writing into the surface of Finn Castle. The massive script covers a large portion of the moon's upper he uh, hemisphere and appears to be a short story chronicling the difficult life of an alien mercenary. Fascinating. So we're going to get some science from that. Uh, Weeks after Ambassador's latest uh, fruitful exploration survey, Kroll Xenologists are practically falling over themselves to publish their takes on the findings in Fine Castle. Okay. Uh, this fear of the scientific community has had some negative yet temporary impact. Pursuits in other fields. What? So wait, us. I don't understand. Okay, so somehow I'm being penalized for something. <laughs> Mental fucking note on that one. So first things first, we're gonna build. Mining station there. Ooh. The ship looks so cool. I'm looking forward to like a Star Wars uh, mod to this game. Because once that comes out, I'm going to be so happy. Um, we're going to build a mining station. Thank you. There. So, right now, um, this is our sensor range. So, within our sensor range right now, we've got Ignore, <laughs> Rum, Jared, Termana, Gunthrist, and an unknown, um, an unknown system. But, it has enemy vessels in it, which... Is not a good thing. Our fleet right now, which is only a five ships, has a military strength of 116. These guys have 178 military strength. And it's a hostile fleet. It's probably some sort of natural like species or something like that. So what we're gonna do. Let's see here. 
couple different ideas, couple different thoughts. Um, we could build up our military, basically to be strong enough to fight it and to attack it. Um, though, to be honest with you, one of the things I want to do is kind of build up our our uh, our primary system. The only issue is if that jumps in and attacks us, it could do some massive damage. Um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to tell our science ship here is to do this. Our construction ship, on the other hand, is going to have a lot of work ahead of it. I'm going to try and stay away from this system for a little while. So that's those aliens there, which are even more fucking powerful. Uh, they have powers of well, high 300s, low 400, so that's always a bad sign. So they're like twice as powerful as these guys, and I'm, <laughs> I'm scared of these guys. Um, it's a neutron star, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. And these look like, yeah, they look like crystalline entities. So, not a good thing. And then these guys here are... I think this is called a space amoeba. But, let's read this. Our first stumbling steps into the void beyond where I uh, uh, were not motivated solely by curiosity or desire to conquer the unknown or I need to leave our mark on the galaxy. The biosphere of Warhai has undergone rapid changes in the past few centuries and prominent science warn that Warhai may be forced with the beginnings of a mass extinction event. That cynical purges of life and, and inseparable from planet existence in the greater cosmos. What? Our research plan has been put together to study a number of planets rendered habitable by major astronomical incidents or planet mass catastrophes. We hope that by reconstructing these events, similar fate may be avoided on Warheni and the Krull race. It falls to you, overlord of the Krull Empire, to ensure that this expedition is carried out. Fuck me. Um, okay, so basically what we're just told here is that uh, we're dying basically like our, our species is dying um, <laughs> uh, uh. okay so there's all these planets we have to track So we have these five planets that we have to survey. <laughs> oh man. Or we're going to die basically from what I understand. Um, shit. I mean, they're all pretty much one jump away from each other if we go this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to build us another science ship. And that's all this science ship is going to do. Um, yeah, okay. Oh, man. I have never, ever, 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 ever had that happen before. Uh, reports of extraordinary free-floating crystal-like objects. Okay, yeah, that's those crystalline entities over there. Let's pause real quick. Okay, so, um, that's a thing. That is a thing. It's going to cost us 324. Oh, man. Uh, crystal entities name themselves, uh, sorry, the name itself compromises between, uh, rival factions of xenobiologists and xenogeologists and Warhai are most definitely alive. So basically it's saying that these little entities over here that are super strong are alive. Um, the vast majority of the Coral Empire produce reject the 
Regressive progression in turn, uh, the, the, the entities do not seem to be male or, or, or to mate. Uh, yet to observe any crystals. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, crystal entities seem to be related not to their age, but to their latent inner internal charge, which can be violently unleashed. And it appears as though sporadic fluctuations in this charge alter the refraction properties of the crystal. The knowledge will surely have a great boon to the sciences. As Prometic Lenses modifier to your empire of plus 10 physics percent. Other one. Adds Crystal Sonar. Modifier to your empire. Spend 30 energy to instantly survey any crystalline entity system when entered. I'm assuming that means it's a system that has a crystalline entity in it. 30 energy is kind of right now expensive to us. So we're just going to go with the prasmatic, prasmatic lens abilities. Um, thank you. I'm actually going to build some stuff here. I'm going to build... Get ourselves four food there. I'm also going to build a power plant there. Get things going a little bit. Well, that's it, eh? That's all there was in that system. Well, that kind of sucks. Okay. So we got some minerals. I think our construction ship can do something. Uh, let's go for some minerals here. And I 40 per uh, 40 some odd short. Oh, minerals are up plus 5%. Perfect. So here we're going to go with uh, the power plant. Okay. Hey, babe. Hey. How was tea? It was wonderful. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hmm. When are you having a shower? In a few minutes, when I'm done this, why? Okay, well, I'm just asking. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, let's unpause. Oh, actually, this should be done right now. Perfect. Research. You're going to go there. Perfect. Um, so, we're going to have the the Betharian power plant twos right off the bat, which will be pretty good. Um, with how many hostiles we have around us, um, I want shields. Well, what the? That's kind of crazy. Can it came from this direction? And we're slowly growing here. Quite a bit of natural resources in our own little territory. How's the food here? It's now down to five, so we're going to move. I can upgrade you and you. That's exactly what we're going to actually do. Kind of get our, our, our primary system up and running. Once it's up and running, then we're laughing. Um, I don't think... Yeah, we don't have anything to really do there yet. Hmm. Maybe? Thank you. Spaceport. 
Yeah, let's get that other science ship going. So what this shine ship is going to do, and only do, is basically hop to these locations and research. I'm going to set it to passive as well, so it doesn't uh, do anything too crazy. Science ship, perfect. We're going to hire someone else here. Uh, you have survey speed, perfect. Uh, we've encountered aliens in these uh, system. These strange objects have fled as beta aliens. Okay. Well, you're gonna go there. I pause you, you piece of shit. Yeah. How word survey? Not too worried about that. Um. Energy, we're doing pretty good, but I think we could always do a little bit more. Energy's always that one... Well, what do you want to do? Hold on. Well, I can't... Survey the system for me, please. And this construction ship is actually going to build. Uh, space for life farms. Well, the coal has uh, research refers to the Tayaki, the docile creatures capable of accessing some lower dimension subspace. They roam from system to system to relative ease, though normally the ease as coral fleets. Uh, they graze on gases commonly in, in upper layers, yeah, mainly gas giants. It is like, oh, they're space cows. Okay, space cows. So we want this guy here basically to get uh, to level two, which shouldn't take long. You might have to look at a couple systems around himself, but he might have to do a, a jump jump. A jump jump? Yeah, do that. Right down here. Yep. Okay. Uh, more influence, more naval capacity, or bio lab. Um, though I would like to get more influence. Um, it's definitely one of those things where. I mean, we get the Propaganda Edict, which gives us more happiness. It gives us more ships, and this gives us more science studies. Hmm. Well, I'm going to put a cut in here. Um, in the next episode... A little more month of this, we can actually build uh, more... Like, uh, border outposts. But, that is this episode. So until then, see you guys next time. And, um, as one person already knows from the live stream over the weekend, um, if you have any requests for games that you'd like to see me play, leave a comment in the description below. But if not, leave a like, leave a comment. I read all the comments and respond back to them um, when I can. But I read them all, no matter what anyways. Um, but yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.